Hello everyone and welcome back to Red Sky Media. This week we're outside and we are testing the brand new iSteady V2 gimbal from Hoheim. So as I said, this week we are indeed outside. That is because the office is currently undergoing some exciting changes that we can't wait to show to you guys inside the studio to my right. And uh, also it's about 30 degrees here at the moment, so it's far too hot to be in there with the studio lights. We thought we'd come outside and enjoy the sunshine while we recorded this one. So as I said, this week we are going to be reviewing the brand new iSteady V2 gimbal from Holheim. Holheim, Holheim, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, we were very lucky enough to have been sent this, so a very special thank you to Holheim for sending this over it means the world as always that obviously we are able to continue to do this kind of show and test brand new and exciting camera products now this retails for 130 dollars which is around 95 pounds i believe so i'll put these up right here as well so dollars pounds um, and there will be links to all of the places where you can buy this down below in the description as well if you would like to go and get one so before we get into anything else what do you need a phone gimbal for well gimbals are obviously very common for cameras they allow for stabilization and they allow for bigger DSLR cameras like this one here, the Lumix S5 that we're filming on today, to obviously be able to move steadily as you're moving around. Maybe it's walking, panning, and other types of shots. Now, phone gimbals are on the rise, and this is because smartphones are a lot more popular now. And what I mean by that is that obviously a lot more people have access to smartphones. I don't know anyone that doesn't have one personally. And this also means that a lot of people starting out or hobbyists or amateur filmmakers choose to pick up a phone gimbal because they want to record things on their phone. Most phones record in 4K, some even record in 6K. Phones have come such a long way and they give us such a good option for budget filmmaking now. And that's where things like this come in, where they allow people to take it to the next level. They also are perfect for vloggers and other activities where you're going to be walking around holding your phone out all day. So I'm very excited to crack this open and see what we've got inside. So let's get it open and let's have a look, in, which does mean I have to go back into the studio under the studio lights. But for you guys, I'll risk it. Here we go to the unboxing. Here we are inside the studio. It is time to crack open the iSteady V2 box. So first of all, we're going to take the lid off here. And instantly we get a, uh, actually I'll put that on the floor, we get a nice little thing here saying make the, mo uh, make the moment, enjoy it. And on the back this is all about the app, I'll hold it up here as well so we can see it on here. This is all basically the information about how you go and download the app and all of the stuff for that. Next we have this little box here, I'm just going to open this off camera quickly just so I can pull the bits out and pull it back. So first of all, this is your menu. This is very standard. We'll put this down to the side, and then I believe this appears to be a, oh, something fell out there. I'll have to grab that in a minute. So this is a nice little bag to obviously travel, uh, pop it in there when we're traveling around and stuff. Very nice. And this was the extra bit. This is just a strap to go on top of the bag. So very nice there. Now we get into the actual bits inside the box, so I'm very carefully going to take this out. So this is the actual uh, gimbal itself here, obviously it's folded up neatly, I will come on to how to do undo it all in a minute, but we just want to put that down there. We also get this, I'm just going to move that to the side, which is a nice little tripod, <laughs> very very mini tripod actually, that is a very mini tripod and that obviously can then screw onto the top bit here. In fact, actually, I might just screw that on now straight away. There you go. So that's on there, and we can just pop that down wherever we need. Finally, inside the box, we'll put it back into the middle again. We have this, which is the charging cable. Obviously, this plugs into there. There we go. So this plugs into there, and then this is just a standard USB thing. And that is it. Turn around that way as well. We have an empty box. I very much like the box design, by the way. Very colourful. Turn it on and pair it ready to go. Everything you need in the app. This is the record button. This is obviously what you need to move it around and control the gimbal. So that is everything. It is on the phone gimbal it is ready to go. And I'm going to take this down to the beach and capture some footage for you guys. Let's go. So we are here in the woods, not the beach. I decided to bring us over here because the beach was rammed instead. So here we are in the lovely woods, as you can see behind me. Um, and yeah, so far, first impressions are quite good, actually. 
Um, it's quite smooth to operate, it's quite easy to handle as well. The only downside of it really is that my phone's quite big, so every time I kind of lean forward on it, it f drops it a little bit. But overall, I think that's something you get used to, kind of like any gimbal, you can just balance that by pushing, counteract it by basically pushing up on the... Um, on the sensor and that will obviously drop it back a bit as well so it's quite easy to negate things like that as well they just take a bit of time as you get used to it going to a very dark bit of the woods here as well but yeah first impressions are pretty solid actually um, it's very light it's very easy to hold as well it's very comfortable for me to just kind of walk along and hold while I'm doing this and they go actually there so you may have just seen it jolt a little bit and that was where it was kind of falling forward so I have to put it back a bit and just kind of tilt it up but I think that's more to do with the size of my phone than it is anything else as well because I do have quite a big phone but it's still doing well batteries are holding out motors are holding out with it on there as well and I'm starting to get tired already from walking all the way through these woods it's definitely a lot cooler here though than the beach I think I made the right choice with the plant there and uh, yeah, hopefully this is something a little bit different to kind of show it off. So let's go and film some bits around here and see if we can make a little cinematic video. I don't know how cinematic it will be because it's shot on my phone, but we can try anyway. And we'll uh, give a good test to the kind of gimbal in the process as well. Let's go. So I've been using it for probably about 25 minutes now, so I'm just going to start to head back. The <laughs> battery is very impressive actually because my phone is about to die, but the gimbal battery has not even gone down, even, I mean, tiniest, tiniest little sliver it's gone down so far, so very impressive from that point of view. Um, I'm going to have a the slope there. Uh, yeah, so very impressive there in terms of battery life and obviously that's another really good positive and something that you want to look for when you're getting those kind of foam gimbals. Um, as we walk again through the dark and gloomy bit of the wood. Uh, yeah, not sure how the footage will turn out. Um, I shot it all just straight out of camera on my phone. I haven't even bothered to uh, go into manual and mess about with settings because I just thought it's fine to be honest as long as you guys get to see an idea of the kind of smoothness and everything that the gimbal offers, that's all that's really important. Uh, I think in a minute when we get back to the gravelly section I'm going to do one more test and that's just going to be, I'm going to film on the gimbal and obviously I'm going to show how smooth it is walking in a straight line, you've obviously seen a lot of that footage anyway over the last 30 seconds or so and then after that I'm also going to film it handheld so you can see the difference and the kind of importance of why gimbals exist and why especially for something like a phone if you are filming on a phone they are so important Right, that is it for the uh, woodland section here. So I hope you got to see there a little bit of the power that kind of gimbals do give you with that stabilisation and obviously the extra benefit that they have in terms of allowing it to be a bit more smoother when you're moving, especially compared to handheld. So that's pretty much it for now and we're going to head back over to um, the studio. Actually, I'm going to head back to the studio, but uh, the next bit you're going to see is going to be the active AI face tracking and smart objects and that's going to come from our shoot tomorrow with me and Hallam. We're just going to do a little bit at the end on that so I've got his help as well but that is it from me here and let's head back
So, as you can see there, if I basically hold up my hand in a V symbol, oh, it's gone very underexposed there. If I hold up my hand in a V symbol, walk back this way, away from the dark, uh, then it automatically starts recording. Uh, this is obviously very useful if uh, you want to set it up remotely somewhere over on a tripod or something and then do a V symbol. It doesn't seem to do it to stop, which is a shame, but it does start recording and it also turns on the active face track at the same time. So, just a nice little extra to be aware of. So this is the active track feature in the uh, iSteady V2 gimbal. If I move from side to side, it does slowly, <laughs> but it does follow me. You can see it does track, but it loses it just a little bit. It's not, if I move from side to side, it does it, but there's a little bit of a delay, especially if I go up or down. Up or down seems to be a lot worse than if we're kind of, side to side seems to be fairly manageable but up and <laughs> up definitely seems to cause all sorts of problems. I can actually, there you go, I have to put it back manually. So it lost me completely there when we went up. But side to side is definitely manageable and down is a bit slow. It's just, yeah, it's just up that it really kind of struggles with. But we're gonna try the object track with this ball now. So if Hallam goes ahead and puts object track on and enables it onto this ball. Just hold it there. Right, we're off. So wherever I move this ball, it should, in theory, stay tracking, which it is. Oh, look at this. This is quite, this is quite clever. I'm very glad I had this in the back of my car. So as you can see, wherever I move it, it basically moves the gimbal to position the camera so that this, is, I'm assuming this is in the center, or no? Slightly off center. Okay, slightly off center, but it's in shot. So this would be really useful if obviously you want to kind of put something in shot when you're filming, this would be useful for filming objects that are moving, and then face track is obviously enabled better for the face of whoever is talking at the camera. So that's the little test over of the object track and now we're gonna head back into the studio. Right, it is time for the final closing thoughts. What do I think of this gimbal? Well, stabilization, fantastic. Uh, handling, being able to hold it. I wish this was a bit longer, but I think that's my preference and what I'm used to with a proper gimbal being a lot bigger. I think for a foam gimbal, because you can operate them one-handed, the buttons and everything, it's absolutely fine, to be honest. I think that's more of a me issue than a device issue, but something to be aware of. The tripod's a bit gimmicky, but it's very cute, and it does actually do its job. It's very useful just to plop down whenever you want, so I guess it's not really gimmicky. But it does close up to make a little bit more of a handle as well. Uh, Footage-wise, obviously, it's fantastic. All the footage that we shot and you could see in our stabilization test, they are much, much smoother using the gimbal, which is exactly what we want. Um, in terms of features, it comes packed. Obviously, we touched on this little light. Up here, we've touched on obviously the AI features, which are probably the biggest thing that really sets this phone gimbal apart from others is the fact that it does have AI smart features involved. And this is obviously fantastic. <laughs> this is something that it might be a bit niche for some people, but I think for the majority of people to have AI face tracking and object tracking is huge. And it's something that really does push this into a top kind of top, top tier contender for phone gimbals out there. Um, Again, obviously, in terms of the feature and stuff, it's very easy to use. Just one button to control, power, things. You've got your little uh, switches and stuff. It's really simple to use, and that's fantastic, again, to report, because that's what we want, is a nice, easy phone gimbal. Oh, we've got a car coming in behind me, down the, uh, down the old back road. I think there isn't really any negatives to it. It's feature-packed, you get so much with it, and it's a really, really fantastic product. And that's exactly what I want to be able to report at the end of testing a product, is that it does its job, and it's a really good product to own as well. So thank you very much to Hohem for sending that out to us. 
and a uh, special thank you to all of you as well for watching the video i hope very much you've enjoyed it if you have leave us a like rating consider subscribing turn on notifications the whole of that good stuff you know it all by now and of course be, feel free to watch through any other videos of our product testing lots of new exciting content coming soon too with the new studio and office in there and lots more products coming too as well including plenty more cameras gimbals accessories and even a drone so thank you very much all of you for watching and as always from me i hope you've enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one goodbye Thank you.